You are listening to Red Riding Hood by James Van Gardner. One day once, was a young person named Red Riding Hood who lived with her mother on the edge of a large wood. One day, her mother asked her to take a basket of fresh fruit and mineral water to her grandmother's house. Not because this was woman's work, my you, but because they did what generous and healthy and gender a feeling of community. Furthermore, her grandmother was not sick, but rather what in full physical and mental health and was fully capable of taking care of herself as a mature adult. So, Red Riding Hood set off with her basket through the woods. Many people believe that the forehead was a full body and dangerous press and never set foot in it. Red Riding Hood, however, was confident enough in her own budding sexuality that sucked over for them imaginary does not intimidate her. On the way to the grandma house, Red Riding Hood was accosted by a wolf who accused her what was in her basket. She replied, Some helpful snacks from my grandmother who is certainly capable of taking care of herself as a major adult. The wolf says, You know my dear, it isn't safe for a little girl to walk through this woods alone. Red Riding Hood said, I find your sexist remark offensive in the extreme, but I will ignore it because of your traditional status as an outcast from society, the strap of which has caused you to develop your own entirely valid world will. Now, if you will accuse me, I must be on my way. Red Riding Hood walked on along the main path, but because his status outside society had freed him from slavery and human to Rainier, written star thought. The wolf knew a quicker route to Grandma's house. He burst into the house and ate Grandma's entirely various hours of action for a carnival such as himself. Of what was masculine or feminine, he put on Grandma's night cross and crowded into a bed. Red Riding Hood entered the quarters and said, Grandma, I have brought some fat-free, sodium-free snack to sell it you in your role of a wise and nurturing matriarch. From the bed, the group said softly, Come closer, child, so I might see you. Red Riding Hood said, Oh, I forgot you are optically showing just as the bed. Grandma, what a big nose you have. They have seen much and forgiven much, my dear. Grandma, what a big nose you have. Only relatively, of course, and certainly attractive in its own way. It has smelled much and forgiven much, my dear. Grandma, what a big teeth you have. The wolf said, I am happy with who I am and what I am. I lived out of bed. He grabbed a red running hood in his crowns, intent on devouring her. Red running hood screamed not out of alarm at the wolf's apparent tendency towards cloth dressing, but because of his willful invasion of her personal spirit, her screams were heard by a person worshipper person. When he burst into the quarters, he saw the Mary and tried to intervene, but as he raised his axe, Red Riding Hood and the wolf both stopped. And just what do you think they are doing? Asked Red Riding Hood, the worshipper person, blinked and tried to answer, but no word came to him. Bursting in here like a Neanderthal, trusting you upon to do your thinking for you. She exclaimed. Sexist! Speciesist! How dare you assume that women and wolf can solve their own problem without a man's help? When she heard Red Riding Hood's 
impassioned speech, Grandma jumped out of the wolf's mouth. Seat the woodshopper person's egg and cut his head off. After this, all those red riding hoods, grandmas, and the wolf felt a certain commonality of purpose. They decided to set up an alternative household based on mutual respect and cooperation. And they lived together in the woods happily ever after.